Today on Stardo. You've lost that loving feeling. How to plan a wake for your failed startup. The internet is full of assholes. And a death panel for your startup. This is Sandy Grayson. And I'm Chris Franks. Welcome to Stardo. Powered by Icosa. Welcome to Stardo, the show for the worldwide entrepreneur. I am Chris Franks. And I'm Sandy Grayson. Sandy, how are you? I am fabulous. How are you? Uh, I'm fantastic. I got to tell you, I'm really enjoying my beer today. I bought you that beer today. You did. I really, I was going to say, it's, I highly recommend it, but I don't know what beer it is. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I thought that you, it's an IPA. It's you a very, it. I very heard you say it. lovely, nice IPA. Belgian style, and I I'm believe. drinking lemonade <laughs> with a little something, something. <laughs> You're not drinking lemonade. You're really not. Uh, what kind of shoes are you wearing today? Um, oh, have we shown? We've shown these before. These are my. Holy Jesus. <laughs> It's, I love your reaction. That's what makes me the happiest. I just feel it's, like it's dangerous. It is. I like to go really close right. to your face. <laughs> right. These are rag and bone boots. Wow. And I can walk in the snow in them. Um, They're like SUV shoes. I don't believe that you can walk in the snow in them. But Dude, look at the bottom. They're... <laughs> They There's have like lots treads. Of treads. They have treads. They're treads. <laughs> um, for those of you in podcast land that would like to see Sandy's shoes, where can people find us? They can go to icosa.co forward slash stardo. I C O S A dot C O. Right, very good. Stardo. Um, so should I spell stardo? <laughs> I think it's really good. It's S T A R T O. Oh, right. Some think because it's I just say starro. Sorrow. Right. Some people think it's D. Stardo. Stardo. Duh. That would be <laughs> duh. Uh, Sandy, each week we like to talk about a theme from beginning a company, from idea through the company's end. So what are we talking about this week? We are talking about the end. We're talking about the exit. The exit. Okay. But particularly, we're not talking about... We're not talking about the big sale today. We're not talking about the happy exit, unfortunately. Right. So actually, it, it's when a kind Google of... When Google calls you to right. say they want to buy your company right. for So what are we talking about instead? Today, we're talking about closing down your company. Time, when it's time to close the thing. When it's time to say goodbye. When it's time to kill it. Um, and, and it's one of those things as entrepreneurs, we, we like to think about the call from Google or the call from Yahoo That's or AOL, why whoever else. we start it usually. Right, exactly, because we think we're going to have that great exit. Or better yet, we like to dream of ringing the bell of the New York Stock Exchange, yes, the day yes. we go public. But the truth is, is the vast majority of companies fail. And they do so for a variety of reasons. So we're not talking about why companies fail today. We're talking about when it's time to close the company down and how you should go about doing that, and right? the signs. Very good. Excellent. So you might be struggling. Today's the day. Today is the day. We might be able to tell you, stick in there, hang hang on there, right. stick it out. Or, or time to kill it. That's right. Uh, but before we do that, we've got really cool stuff to talk about. Uh, tell us what is going on That's in debatable. the news. <laughs> <laughs> we, have, we have something to talk about. We have some we're going to have something to talk about. It's not as much fun about. as the Blackberry porn story from <laughs> okay. last week. Well, <laughs> tell us what's going on this week in okay, Startup Okay, this news. is the news that I found this morning, which I thought was kind of funny. There's a new survey out okay. that says that people are actually getting ruder on social media. Like, they're getting mean. Okay. And they said two in five users have actually ended contact, cut off contact completely with a person that they have a relationship with over a virtual altercation. Really? Two in five. Wow. That's a lot. That is a lot. Have you ever gotten to a virtual altercation? <laughs> no, I mean, not, not through social media, but, you know, I'm, I'm kind of on the other side of that curve where most of the people I have a relationship with on social media, I've known for years and years. Um, but I'd be more interested in asking you, you have two teenage daughters. Mm -hmm. And so there's that whole mean girl mm -hmm. syndrome. And the girls can be mean and kind of catty and things like that. Have you ever experienced with your daughters? No. Um... No, not so much online. Hmm. More so in person. In person, mean girls, right. <laughs> Middle school was well, really rough. I mean, it was kind of rough. If you're going to be a bully, might as well do it in person. Girls, online. girls can be mean. Uh, no, okay, I'll, so let me just read you yeah, a couple, couple things. So, um, they just said that, the study said that online arguments now often spill into real life and that a lot of people are blocking, unsubscribing, and unfriending people over virtual arguments. And they gave a couple of examples. I wanted to know if you had heard of this. Okay. There's a British football player, his name's Joey Barton. 
and he was summoned by the French Soccer Federation's Ethics Committee because he called another player an overweight lady boy on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so he got in trouble for that. Well, okay. Have you heard of this? Uh, no, no I, first of all, <laughs> but I love the fact I'm going to now call everybody, <laughs> including Nathan, an overweight, overweight what is it? I can think of a lot of worse things you can call somebody baby, than an baby? overweight lady boy. Lady boy. <laughs> You're an overweight lady boy. <laughs> and then there was another one. There was a boxer, Curtis Woodhouse, who people were actually praising. They were really happy that he tracked down a tweeter who called him a complete disgrace and mm -hmm. a joke after he had a loss. Yeah. And he went to this guy's house, on nice. like the Twitter guy, he went to his house and asked for an apology. Right. So people were applauding Did him. He? Apologize? I, I think he got the apology. Because if, like, a boxer shows up at your house, like, I know. hey, right. <laughs> People I are apologize. a lot braver when they're sitting behind their keyboards Well, let me home, ask you about this, right? because I think this is a very interesting question, is in the, the last political cycle, there's a lot of political yes. rhetoric going oh, on. Oh, yes. Did you block anybody based on the political rhetoric? I did not. In fact, you know, I refrain from making political statements on my Facebook Twitter profiles because for so many years I used Facebook and Twitter completely as business. Right. Um, recently, my Facebook page, I deleted all my non-friends and actually it's mostly just friends and I have a professional page, but I still, I don't know, I just, I'm not the kind of person that wants to get out there and make these big statements. It takes a lot for me to get out there and say, like, it's got to be something that really gets me going. But my husband was engaged in a tremendous amount of political conversation. Oh, really? And he has a lot of friends who are on a different side of the political fence. I would describe my husband as, as a like, fascist. He's a fascist, <laughs> He's isn't a he? Fascist. God, there's so many fascists around these days. No, I like to more describe. More of a communist? No, we're, I would say we are more um, bleeding heart liberals. Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> That's how I okay. describe us. But he has a lot of hardcore Republican friends. Right. And they got into these debates. And most of them were friendly. Mm -hmm. My husband is really good, you know, about separating, you know, these kind of religious and political conversations. He can he can have those conversations with people, whereas I get more passionate and offended. <laughs> right. Um, well, that is, that's an interesting Anyway, story. so, yeah, so there was a lot of political back and forth and people disagreeing and, you know, there were some really bad, like, I think, offensive things said during the last political race. It it's Racist, borderline racist, perhaps? Yeah, and you know what? It's funny. It's because it's like a safe place for the vitriol to live. Mm -hmm. It's when you, you wouldn't look at somebody in the face and call them a fascist pig or whatever. Mm -hmm. You can do it online. It's and it's just, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's kind of yeah. crazy. Um, well, that's an interesting story. But now it is time <laughs> for us to dive into talking about when it's time to kill the company. When is it time to kill the company? So You're let's get into it. Us. Well, so I started off thinking about this. And, and um, again, as I've told you guys all in the past, every bit of advice that I have to give is because I fucked it up someplace along the way. And I certainly have fucked this one up. We talked on, on this show about the zombie company in the past mm -hmm. and about when a company is not quite alive and not quite dead. Um, if you'd like to hear Chris's take on the zombie company, <laughs> I think the episode was called This Is How You Do It. This Is How You Do It. Right. But zombie company is like the This Is How You Don't Do It. Probably. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so I started looking for articles online about giving you advice on when it's time to kill your company. What are the right signs mm -hmm. when it's time to kill your company? And there really wasn't a great article out there. So I went around to you know, hear it galvanize, and I asked a couple of really smart guys uh, that I know, some CEOs, and we came up with five signs it's time to kill your company. Are you ready? Hit me. Hit Number me. five, you've lost that love and feeling. <laughs> and we've talked it. about this a Sing lot. It. Come on. Quite, baby, baby, <laughs> I'll get down on my knees. Uh, we've talked about this a lot, but the number one predictor, in my opinion, this is not scientific, in my opinion, the number one predictor of success of your startup is how passionate really? you are about that startup. If you start to lose that passion along the way, you're going to be a failure. So that is a sign that you should kill your company. Number four, you can't remember why you started the company in the first place. <laughs> that actually did happen to me. Like at one point really? along the way in like my second company, I was sitting there going, why did I do this again? Yeah. They're really not that smart of a company. 
<laughs> really not going anywhere. Was it because, like, remember we were talking to Dave Bacon last week, and, and his guest was saying that your customer, they start getting diluted, they go in all different directions. Was it because of that? Like, you kind of lost where I you don't were supposed know. to be going? Yeah, well, which actually leads us to, to uh, number three, which is you've pivoted so many times, you're dizzy. <laughs> like, literally, you can't find traction anywhere. You just keep Pivot. kind of spinning around and trying to find different directions. Uh, number two is one of my personal favorites, is your burn rate could uh, heat a third world company, country. <laughs> now see, the, here's the thing though, we've heard these stories of people that were like burning cash, like PayPal, right? Right. And they turned it all around. But sure. how do you sure. know? You know, how it's you on, know? on fourth and 20 with, with a couple seconds left in the football game, occasionally you'll hit a Hail Mary as well. Right. So that's what Most people, normal people tend to hang on to, right? Even though their company's burning money and right. all signs are not looking good, they're like, I'm going to be that one. But I've also heard these other people who have mortgaged their house. Right. Who have gotten divorces yes. and lost their kids yes. because they just couldn't walk away. Yeah. In a time that it was time, it's to like work you with. just keep getting more and more invested in it. the law of escalating commitment. Yes. We talk about that a lot. Yes. Yeah, I mean, when it's time, when do you stop and turn around? Uh, and the number one reason <laughs> it's a sign <laughs> that it's time to kill your company, one that's very near and dear to my heart, you develop startup pattern baldness. This explains a lot. Yes, is that what you have? when it's time, I mean, <laughs> when you start losing the hair, when the lettuce goes away, it's time to move on. It's time to move on with your life. Have you moved on a lot in your uh, life? Yeah, then I started another company and uh, another, and another, another. Sorry. But at that point in time, when I, when I did start losing clumps of hair, clumps of it, it was kind of the end of one of my companies. Yeah. And it was like, yeah, this ain't worth it, man. I hear I'm going to move on. Well, I have something that I think is really great. If you decide that you have to close your company down, my dear friend and mentor, Brad Feld, <laughs> You call him a mentor. Would, I don't know. Would he? Would he? Agree I don't know if you? he would agree with that or not. But sure. no. he probably doesn't watch the show. <laughs> <laughs> I can send it to him and say, right. "Will you be my Will mentor?" Will you be my mentor, Will you be my Brad? Mentor? Anyway, Brad wrote in his blog uh, about Wake Startup Wakes, which I think is such a great idea. It's all about closure. Right. And he said that there are an endless amount of stories, like we were just discussing, about the entrepreneur who failed and then created a monster success for his company. But there's not enough discussion about how startup communities should embrace failure. And what Brad suggested was having a wake for a failed company can actually turn this all around. It's, he says, if you're an entrepreneur and you observe another entrepreneur in your community failing, that you should go and do something about it. That you should organize a group of entrepreneurs that have a wake. Surprise your friend, surprise the guy, and you know he's shutting down his company and take him out. And it doesn't have to be like, all about getting drunk, debaucherous. I'm sure it would be. <laughs> it could it, be part of it. I'm, it could be part of it. I'm shutting my company <laughs> down. <laughs> but it's really just about figuring out what would make that entrepreneur feel appreciated. Well, and, a nice meal. Embracing the failure of it. Exactly, right. and just accepting that failure is a part of entrepreneurial right. life, and it's not a bad thing. And so that's what he says, um, you know, if you're an entrepreneur in a company that's failing, don't be ashamed. Most startups fail. And what matters is not that you failed, but how you handle it and what happens next? I, I could not agree more. Yeah, I could not agree more. I mean, failure, when the first time, and um, it, it's, it's a still tough to talk about to this day, the first time I knew I was failing in my first company. I knew it, and it hurt because I had put so much of my ego, it was tied up into the fact of the success of this mm -hmm. business. I had left a job. I left a good job to go out and do this. And I knew that I could be a success in the startup world. I just knew I could be an entrepreneur. And I went out and I was failing. Yeah. And it was awful. I had no place to turn. I really couldn't talk to my family about it. Mm -hmm. I had no other entrepreneur sort of network at that point in time to talk about. And along the way, you realize that failure is good. Failure is, it, is okay. It really good? is. Is it good? Really? It is good. It's good because <laughs> you learn a lot, as right? an entrepreneur, you're going to learn so much. So much. Everybody too. says that shit. You learn so much more when you fail than when you succeed. But when you're in the middle oh, of failure, hurts, you do not man. want to hear that. And it hurts so bad. Right? It really does hurt. It's but embarrassing. Wake, it, like it's, you feel, I know, like you feel embarrassed. You feel like 
What did I do wrong? And if it's a big startup, you know, my first company was just me and one other employee. That was tough enough, but when you have a big company where you know, tens, 20, 30 people are counting on you for a paycheck every week and you, you know, have to look them in the eye and say, sorry, yeah. we're, we're not going forward. That's a tough conversation. It's a tough one conversation of my, to have. One of my favorite quotes and my, my uh, assistant, my actually business partner, Debbie, who I like to call fucking genius. Right, lover. Who <laughs> used to joke about this all the time. Congratulations, Debbie, for getting engaged. <gasps> oh. <laughs> yes, right. congratulations, Debbie. They're putting a ring on that thing. Yeah. He put a ring on it. Um, we used to laugh all the time when I first interviewed Brad on my radio show. He told a story about a big first failure and that there was another uh, VC guy around and they ended up, you know, losing a lot of money. People had invested a lot of money and it just was not, yeah, it didn't, didn't go work. well. And this other, you know, mentor of Brad's said to him, at least they can't kill you and eat you. <laughs> <laughs> and Debbie and I used to joke all the time, right. like, no one's going to die. Like, if we don't get what we need to get done today, no one's going to die. We like, would always not. say and early on, this is not brain science. Exactly. So I just thought that was so funny. They surgery. can't, at least they can't kill you and eat you. Right. That's very good advice. Right? It's very it good puts advice. everything in perspective. Uh, I, I want to I talk directly to the entrepreneurs out Wait, there. Wait, we have the to do the... This is the oh, time of the show. Time of the show that I like to call Tough Love by Chris. Tough Love by Chris. All right, cupcakes. All right. <laughs> Lean in there, Sally's. <laughs> Suck gonna, it up, I'm princesses. I'm going to drop a little knowledge right on your <laughs> noggin here. Uh, it's not going to be as tough and as stern as I've been in the past. However, I want you to take a few moments. And I want you to look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, is it time to kill your company? The natural answer is like, no, no, no I can't do it. No, I of course I'm not. However, here's the advice I'm going to give you. Sally. <laughs> princess. princess. I like princess. Here's the advice I'm going to give you, princess. <laughs> the only thing, the most valuable thing that you have and your control as an entrepreneur is not the capital that's invested in your company. It's not your technology. It's not your assets. It's not your people. The most valuable thing you have as an entrepreneur is your time. Is your time there, Cupcake. What are you spending it on? Are you spending it on something that matters? Are you spending it on a company that's gonna go someplace? Or are you throwing your most valuable thing in the world down the drain, which is your time, your energy, and in my case, my hair? <laughs> that literally went down the drain, Aww. right? What are you doing with your time? When it's time to kill the company, it's going to be painful. It's going to suck. It's going to be hard to, to face your employees. It's hard to face your investors. God, taking family money, friends and family, and going to them and saying, hey, I lost your money. That's some awkward Thanksgiving dinners. However, mm -hmm. the single most valuable thing that you have in this world is your time. And if you're not spending it on your best possible idea, your best possible company, you there, Prince says, you're wasting your time. So take a moment. Look yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, is it time to kill this fucker? <laughs> now it's my turn to make it all better. I think that's good. I'm not going to call them cupcake and princess and try to demean you. <laughs> but what I will say is I believe there is a place inside of you that knows that knows the answer. And one of the best ways that you can figure out whether you should close your company or whether you should hang in there a little bit longer is take a breath, close your eyes, and imagine that it's six weeks from now. And imagine first that you've closed your company. You've had those hard conversations, but now you're four weeks out. You're a month later and you're on to something new. And how does that feel? And then, Take the same moment with a deep breath and imagine that you stuck it out and it's six weeks out and you're still in this business. And maybe things are going a little bit better. Maybe they're going great. Just oh. check in. Do a gut check. Because I, I do believe there's a place inside of you that will know. And so if it's going to be difficult, get through it. What do they say? Fail fast. Right. Get on to the next thing. If you really, really, truly believe that there's a chance that this is going to happen for you, then I say put a deadline on it. Give yourself a very, very specific amount of time. And if you haven't seen specific turnaround dollars and cents, I would say, mm -hmm. then, then you know. So 
don't keep dragging it out, dragging it out, and then before you know it, it's four years down the road, and you're still trying to save this company that's not quite doing it for you. And if it's the latter one where you kind of close your eyes and you imagine that you're still in business, and you feel sick to your stomach yes. there, princess, close the fucker. That's the sign. <laughs> that is the sign. Your ulcer starts and, flaring up again. And let's just uh. take that advice from Brad, that if that is the case, do something symbolic. Let yourself have completion. Do not be ashamed. Call some friends, go to your local pub, have a wake, toast to the effort the that Irish you made, week. and and get ready to move on. I think that will definitely make you feel better. It's symbolic, it's closure, and then you can move on to the next great adventure. Ah, uh, that sounds fantastic. But that, sadly, Sandy Grayson, is all the time we have fast. for this week's show. Sandy, tell people where they can find us. You can find us on iTunes. Make sure you, descri you describe. You describe. Subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> that lemonade gets yeah, me every you're time. Half, you're half a lemonade. <laughs> wow. Subscribe to us on the iTunes, Stardo podcast. You can find our video of the podcast on icosa.co forward slash Stardo. Please follow us on Twitter, Stardo TV, and also like us on Facebook, Stardo TV, if you have any suggestions for guests topics, problems that we can help you with. You need some tough love, personally, from Chris Franks. <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> uh, I'm still waiting for my first request. Still waiting. Uh, my, my new business, it's consulting. It's Tough Love Consulting. Tough Love, Chris I Franks. think that's good, Tough Love Consulting. <laughs> All right, well, join us again next week for another episode of Stardo, the show for the worldwide entrepreneur. Go do great things.